السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد you know in almost every single gathering in every single conference that we attend and every time there's a Q&A session there's usually always questions about one topic that every single member of the Muslim community wants to talk about whether they're young or whether they're old well, you know, it doesn't matter regardless of what background they come from, and that is family. They would like to know how to live with their family in an Islamic way, in a productive way, in a successful way. And one of the things that when we're discussing the Qur'an's solutions to certain problems, to certain issues that were going on in the community, one of the first issues that people would like to know is what the Qur'an says about family and this is exactly why I'm so honored to introduce our guest speakers today I would like to invite them up and then I will give a brief introduction to each one of them when they're about to start their talk so I would like to introduce our sp first speaker uh, Dr. Zainab Alwani Alhamdulillah she is an Islamic scholar and a researcher her specialty is in Islamic jurisprudence or fiqh Quranic studies and family issues she has her PhD from the International Islamic University of Malaysia, and she's the first female jurist on the Fiqh Council of North America, which is a, a really positive contribution. Um, she is a professor of the Arabic language and Islamic studies at Northern Virginia Community College and an adjunct professor of Arabic studies at John Hopkins University. Dr. Alwani has also authored and co-authored several publications. I cannot mention all of them, but the topics range from family, marriage, divorce, women, and domestic violence. And they're very interesting things. I'm going to be going and looking at them myself, inshallah ta'ala. So Dr. Zainab, we would like you to address this question that everyone is, would like to know. Specifically, what in your opinion are the main challenges that we face as Muslims in America and in the Western Hemisphere in particular. So if you can enlighten us, inshallah ta'ala, about 15 minutes, inshallah ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul aqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. I would like to thank of course the organizers and uh, Dr. Siddiqui and uh, Brother Shakil and everyone the volunteers, uh, beautiful volunteers, really, who they conducted such important uh, conference or at least discussion that we have to have among ourselves. Um, I, I would like to start, in fact, um, regarding the statement that posed by the organizers of the conference today, and especially they send us this. This session will explore the underlying reasons of the erosion of traditional family structure and values and its impact on the society. I would like to just start with this. I know I will answer your question, but I will focus on uh, parent-child relation. And I think this is one of the uh, greatest challenges that we face as Muslims here in America and in the West. There are a couple of questions that need to be answered before even we get into the details. First the question, how do we define a traditional family structure? Second, how does the Quran define the family structure? The answer to the first question will determine and set out the agenda for the change. So how do we define traditional family? The roles, the responsibilities of each member. Is being afraid to speak to the father or the mother part of that structure? 
What about Allah's teachings on respecting and obeying parents as prescribed in the Quran? What does it mean to us? How do we apply this? Could we derive a Quranic model on the parent-child relationship? What is the Quranic and what is not Quranic? How do we approach the Quran with our modern problems? How do we pave the path for change? And who then sets this agenda? The path for building a healthy parent-child relationship in the Muslim community can only be reached through, of course, the foundational the Quran and Sunnah, the sources. As many scholars have recognized that, any new traditions or custom or culture that we establish represents in the Muslim community that is not rooted in the discourse of the Quran and Sunnah will ultimately fail. I believe that Muslim scholars, practitioners, and Muslim women who are rooted in the scholarly discourse of Islam are best positioned to pave this path for positive reform. What does the Quran offer on parent-child relationship? I'm, I know you are only hearing now questions. How do we evaluate our understanding of this model? How do we highlight our challenges today based on the Quranic teachings? And how do we approach the Quran with these issues? How do we evaluate our process while approaching the Quran? The Quran encourages its readers to ask questions, seek clarity, and draw insp inspiration from it in ways that complicate nuance and ultimately enrich the debates and then refine practices. Approaching the Quran during the time of revelation was based on a dialogue, ongoing dialogue and interaction between the people and the revelation, the Quran. People raised their questions and issues and then the revelation answered. Today the Quran is complete. Therefore, defining a comprehensive methodology in approaching the Quran and the Sunnah is a must. And in this case, which we will discuss maybe further uh, with the questions and answers. But now I will mention only one example that served to demonstrate how the first generation seriously engaged the Quran and saw it within their right to pose questions that summarize specific social challenges uh, and problems at their time. Formulating the question is uh, the most uh, critical stage. Khawla bin Thabit was dignified by God or by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in Surah 58, 1 to 4, with the title of Al Mujadila, the women who disputes. She earned this title because she complained to the Prophet, وسلم, peace be upon him, regarding the pagan custom of Dihar. This was held by pagan custom to imply a divorce and free the husband from any responsibility for marital duties, but did not allow the wife to leave the husband's house or to contract a second marriage. Khawla understood the Islamic paradigm was based on justice and mercy. Therefore, she complained to the Prophet. Soon, the revelation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, uh, the ayah, the surah, um, surah al-mujadila, and confirmed Khawla's conviction that what her husband did to her was unjust and was henceforth to, the, to be prohibited by the law. The Quran confirmed Khawla's concern and names the surahs al-mujadila to encourage people to identify, evaluate, and seek change of any negative or unfair practices. In regard of child-parent relationship, the Qur'an presents a comprehensive model on this relationship, including moral, legal, and social aspects, and even economic aspects. The Qur'an vividly illustrates various stories, experiences that present themselves as examples from prophets and wise people, such as Luqman, in how to deal with their children, 
Noah and his son, Ibrahim with his father, and his, uh, the, later with his son, Ismail, in building the Kaaba and uh, also even sacrificing himself. Luqman and his son, the dialogue between, between him and his son. Yaqub, Jacob and his children, Yusuf and the others. David and Suleiman, Zachariah and Maryam, and also with, even with Yahya and his father. The question is, what can we learn from these stories and dialogues that are relevant to modern-day parent-child relationships? And how do we identify our greatest challenges within that relationship and apply them to the current American Muslim families? Is there a Quranic solution to our challenges? In the very limited time, I know I spent five maybe minutes, I, have, I will try to touch on some of these issues, but I will raise this question. How do we build a healthy, strong relationship between parent and child in our time? And how do we maintain this relationship? So I, I believe and I think the major challenge that confronts parent-child relationship in America is really communication. If the parents are actively involved in their child's life and have an open and honest channel, of communication with them, then the major societal issues can be dealt with before they become too big to handle. These issues like drugs, alcoholism, premarital relations, gender relations, pornography, and so on and so forth, can be identified as its infancy stage and the proper means of prevention can be taken. Effective communication means that parents must understand the societal pressures facing their children and educate themselves, and especially for the immigrants, educating themselves on how to deal with them properly. They must be willing to reach out to the broader community to develop a support network for their children in case they fall into some of these issues. The traditional way of keeping everything on the hush-hush or behind the closed doors must be replaced with the transparency and community outreach. The old saying, it takes a village to raise a child, must be re-implemented so the children know their values in the broader community and understand their boundaries when they want to uh, deviate from the right path. Children are very smart and they can find a million ways to trick their parents into letting them do what they want to do. The goal for the parents is to make that tactic obsolete. In other words, parents must be willing to have the hard conversation with their children so that the children would want to take advice from them as opposed to random friends who might not have good advice to give. What should the parents do to make their children comfortable to open up to them? Based on your, um, really, based on my own experience and reading the Quran and the others, I found that parents should never make the children feel ashamed for expressing their emotions. The Quran expresses this very clearly with the, uh, the stories that provided by the prophets and Luqman and his son. Rather, they should encourage them, encourage them to be open about their feelings, even when it comes to taboo issues such as alcohol or sex or any other issues. Children and teenagers are exposed to tremendous pressure growing up in this country, from being bombarded with sexual images and messages onto television, internet, and other uh, sources. What they hear at school and to actual experiences they encounter at, the, at an early age, educate our kids, our children, to always let us know if anyone ever hurts them in any way and make sure that we, they never feel ashamed when they share this with us. The denial around serious uh, issues such as abuse, uh, all kinds of abuse, substance abuse, mental health issues, and many other issues. Um, is not the Quranic way of dealing with the problems in silence. The silence causes severe damage and children and adults suffer generations after generation. 
The Quran is very open on this, and that's what we need to learn. In conclusion, in exploring such issues, very critical issue, I advance the following propositions. First, religious leaders should dev uh, devote energies to make the Qur'an as the actual guidance in inviting the scholars from different fields of knowledge to study and analyze the surahs, ayat that are related to any issues, but specifically in our case here for parent-child relations. Forming committees that would advance thoughts and ideas lead to create a culture that, based on the Quranic guidance, develop community support programs and to continue conversations on crucial issues that impact Muslim community and humanity at large in our time. The second one, policymakers, community leaders, and religious authorities must work together to forward policies and programs in the act procedures that allow for integration between religion and civil requirements. Activists, third, activists, religious and uh, civil leaders must work together to ensure that support services can meet pressing demands without downgrading any of the groups. In this context, I also argue that there are pressing needs to ensure that female community leadership opportunities are on par with their brothers uh, and women. They have to have also a say and uh, present their own expertise on this, um, and especially at that time. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Takbir. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Dr. Zainab.